From the 1420 WBSM Broadcast Center, this is the Ken Pittman Show. Get interactive. Become a keyboard warrior on WBSM's Facebook page. Read Pittman's latest blogs on WBSM.com and call 508 996 0500 to get on the air. Now, the unapologetically conservative Ken Pittman. Putin is uh, now way beyond the capabilities of any James Bond villain and is now constantly reminding the world what a psychopath he is. And Russia is slowly advancing deeper into Ukraine. The press doesn't really cover all that uh, as much as they ought to be. You know, they want us to invest in this war, and it's lo they're losing. Ukraine is losing. Another city fell yesterday. But um, the biggest detractor for Putin politically, uh, this guy, Navalny, who was um, really the one who exposed his vast personal gains that he's made while in office. You know, he's, a, he's a, one of the richest men in the world, Vladimir Putin. And he pointed out his super yacht, his estates all over the, the, the country of Russia. And... For that, uh, he was thrown in a Siberian work camp, a prison. And he was seen the day before yesterday um, uh, at a, some sort of court proceeding, which was a sham. And he was murdered yesterday. And of course it was Putin. Uh, there's a long list of, and he's not, I, I doubt he's denying it. Seriously, I mean, maybe with a grin. You know, the Russians are, I hate to credit Mitt Romney, but, you know, how foolish does Obama look now that, you know, when he was the president of the United States with the NSA and the CIA in his ear, he didn't know as much as a private citizen, former governor of Massachusetts, about the, the greatest threat That's pathetic that Barack Obama didn't know as much as Mitt Romney at that point in time, but he was right in that debate. People laughed at him because Obama, you know, with his nose in the air, snobby. Well, the 80s call, they want your foreign policy back. Yeah. Sounds great, right? But the moron didn't even understand that this guy was spot on. And obviously, we, we, had, we were dealing with Al-Qaeda, things like that, ISIS. Uh, Obama couldn't even defeat ISIS, but Russia had thousands of nuclear weapons and a psychopath behind them with Vladimir Putin. And Romney saw that as a bigger threat, and he was absolutely right. But I think as long as he was making money, um, and as long as you didn't insult him, he, he, was, he was willing to stay in a certain parameter. And... Again, I, I fault the activity of the Americans, in particular the Bidens, uh, they, as the face of this, but not just the Bidens, encroaching into what is the sphere of influence Putin expected to have. So when Biden came over, first the, in 2014, you know, the Obama administration, they helped the Ukrainians form a coup d'etat and they overthrew a democratically elected president, something we're not supposed to do because he was more pro-Russian than pro-Western, even corrupt. But you're not supposed to, and they denied it, but it's, it's not really in question from everything I've read. And then as soon as the new president's in, Biden goes over there, wants to be all point man for things in Ukraine. This is now January 2014, same month, Hunter Biden gets kicked out of the U.S. Navy. Vice President of the United States' son is kicked out of the U.S. Navy for crack cocaine addiction. His behavior must have been absolutely abhorrent because you know his superiors probably put up with so much more than they normally would have. Because Biden can retaliate. 
But Biden gets kicked out of the, the U.S. Navy. Now, if Joe Biden is a great father, if he's a great father in 2014 and sees that his son was just kicked out of the Navy for crack cocaine addiction, wouldn't a great father be able to convince his son and, and, and insist that he goes to a world-class addiction center? No, he puts him right to work, sends him to, into Ukraine, where he's making $83,000 a month in a country he knows nothing about, in a field, energy, that he knows nothing about, with national laws he knows nothing about. Still active ad addict, still a crackhead. Puts him on the board of directors. We have, we have emails from Hunter saying that his father gets half his salary. An email from Hunter to his daughter. We have a former business partner talking about... And they got an email now that would just come out. Um, the uh, former Naval Academy graduate, former business partner of Hunter Biden. Email saying, don't mention Joe by name unless it's in person. You know how careful they are. This is a smoking gun. But Putin's watching this, right? So... The vice president's son sits in the board of directors in an energy company that I was just making money off of. I'm presuming, because the last president was so corrupt, I'm presuming that, like the mafia, you know, you pay tribute instead of getting smacked around. So the West moves in, right? The, the, the Polish president, NATO president, sits on the board of directors with Hunter Biden. Uh, there's a former higher up in the British government who sits on the board of directors at Burisma Holdings with the Polish president, Hunter Biden. Eventually, Mitt Romney's national security advisor and close confidant, former CIA station chief, Kofor Black, sits on the board of directors at Burisma Holdings. Right on Putin's doorstep. Why is the CIA... Uh, you know, I, I, you can only imagine. So... This is January of uh, 2014 when, Hunt, when Hunter Biden um, is, is thrown out of the Navy. His partner was announced uh, that month, and, Hunt, and they agreed that Hunter was going to be hired, but they hid the fact that he was being hired. They didn't announce it till April, you know, so it looked good, I guess. But Putin invaded in March of 2014. Did he do it because he saw... The West grabbing all this. And the Obama administration, how did they support Ukraine? They, they sent medical supplies and blankets while, while Ukraine was getting overrun by the Russian military. And Trump is supposed to be a Russian asset. As soon as he got in office, he was sending anti-tank missiles and real weapons to Ukraine as a deterrent for Russians to invade. But he's a Russian asset. That's what a Russian asset would do. It's a hot mess. And the Russia recedes, right? They go back. They stop the campaign. They keep Crimea. Trump is defeated. Biden wins the elections. Russia starts surrounding Ukraine. And now the rest is history. They, they invaded Ukraine again. And he's murdering all of his detractors. I am now not convinced he stops at Ukraine. I don't know, I don't know where he's going to get his forces. I know that he's working hard to expand his alliances with um, people in South America, with India, with China, of course, with Iran. Financial and military packages. So now the Middle East is upside down. I really believe Russia helped to coordinate what Iran is doing with, with the Houthis, with Hezbollah, with Hamas. Because look what it's done. It's taking the eyes off of Ukraine and everybody's focused on Israel. I mean, strategically, it's, it's brilliant. I, I know a lot of conservatives uh, are, are okay with Tucker Carlson going over and, and talking to Putin 
Uh, I didn't watch it. Uh, I'm an American first. I don't care that Biden's a Democrat. I'm, I'm not going to side with Putin over, over Biden. And um, I do know Putin's positions. But whatever his problems are with the West, he's now, you can just forget it. Uh, it is, it's pointless to even <clears throat> agree that he's right about this, that, or the other thing because he's been such a terrible war criminal. And it looks like the Cossacks are still in place in, in Russia, enforcing the tyranny. Uh, this guy, Navalny, um, was not afraid, obviously not afraid to die. I think when you stick your neck out like that against Putin, it's just a matter of when, not if you're going to be killed. It, it, there's really nobody who survived who's done far less. But any, anybody who's on his radar... It's just the mindset, you know, like like the Russians, when they were talking to the Americans, and again, they, during, during, I want to say it was the Bush administration, uh, the original Bush administration, one of the Russian diplomats says, we, we may look like you, but we're not like you. And it is true. They think differently. They operate much differently. For now. But I have to say the model of what we're seeing done in this country as we go more socialist, as we go less sovereign, uh, you know, you, you have no right to speak out against a massive invasion into this country. Who are you? They're creating a chaotic, lesser future for, for our children. Uh, we're seeing massive amounts of crimes, violent crimes being committed by the illegal immigrants. Uh, Venezuela has emptied their jails like Castro did in, the, in 1980. Uh, you know, these, these caravans of Immigrants, military age, males coming through. They're not just from the Central and South America. They're, they're from China. They're from Russia. They're from Syria, Afghanistan. And the floodgates are open. And you can't tell me that you don't believe operatives from these hostile countries are just waiting for orders. That it, You'd be a fool. You'd be a fool to, to make that statement and say you're confident that's not happening. It is a gift. What's being done at the border is a gift to our enemies. And I'm, I'm really glad that the people who are objecting to the misuse of community property for illegal immigrants, this is, the, the Democrats, they better get their bean counters out there because they're going to lose a lot of votes in areas they're going to need. And it's not lost on people what Senator Chris Murphy said from Connecticut talking about the Ill illegal immigrants. And he said, well, the people that we really care about. That, that was emphasized on a number of news cycles. Um, I don't know if it was a, something he just misspoke or whatever, but was that a slip? I don't know. I do know that both candidates who are clearly heading towards the nomination could somehow be removed for other reasons. You know, Biden has his own problems. I don't, I think the Democratic Party, because of the universal way the media has reacted, asking him tough questions, suddenly following that report by the Justice Department, he should be charged, but we can't charge him because his mind isn't there. He can't stand trial. It's not a mistake. These, these are very calculated people. These are very cunning people that are, that are running the country. And they must have, and I'm going to tell you, they, they know who they're going to replace him with. They just haven't figured out a way to bring it to the American people. It's going to happen at the Democratic National Convention. I don't know for sure who it is. I, I think the, the list is short, though. Um, I'm hearing Michelle Obama hates politics, would never do it. I'm not convinced. And it is one heck of a commitment if you don't like the job. I get it. But I would say the Obamas elevated themselves <laughs> pretty, pretty well, right? 
And as soon as they were out of office, they get a $60 million book deal. I mean, they're looking pretty good. Nice place on the vineyard, nice place in Georgetown. I don't think it's going to be Michelle. I, 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 I'm not convinced she doesn't like politics where she wouldn't take it. I just think they have somebody else in mind. I, I, it's tough to imagine they're not going to. And it's, it's almost unthinkable, the incumbent president not getting the nomination, not getting the delegates. And where he's, you know, he's winning in his party, what, 90%? in these primaries so far where he's been on the ballot. Well, that said, I, I think he's in real, real trouble. It's, his mind is not going to get better. It only goes in one direction. And despite the, the, the filter that his supporters and his handlers I'm trying to put on the president when he's visible, when he's audible, it doesn't work. He's he's so he's so god awful at uh, uh, you know his speeches, and he does have moments of clarity, but so does everybody with with problems of dementia at at certain levels. He, they have moments of clarity. It's probably not as bad as the Justice Department assessed in order to protect him. But when people suspect there's a problem in this area anyway, um, that, that's going to be enough to say he can't continue. I want to know what you're thinking. Who would be a Democrat they would consider to swap for the incumbent to face the Republican nominee in November? 508-996-0500 will return in a moment. You're listening to Ken Pivot. All right, we're back. 508-996-0500. Uh, looks like Elizabeth Warren may have a an actual contender to deal with, uh, a Republican. A cryptocurrency attorney uh, is, is what he's known for, but he's, he's, you know, he's done other things with his career and is pretty, pretty loaded, actually. Uh, John Deaton, who just moved to Swansea from Rhode Island, to be eligible to run against Elizabeth Warren. Uh, just because he's a Republican, I wouldn't say go go and vote for him as much as you really need to get rid of Elizabeth Warren. I, I don't know um, what his intentions are. If he, is he going to... Let's say he wins. What are his plans to do more for Massachusetts than Elizabeth Warren? And anything would be more. But, you, you know, you've got to get a sense that he's going to actually work for Massachusetts. Elizabeth Warren has been working for herself. And likes to impress the far left Marxist with her stump speeches against banks and the systems rigged and all this stuff that she doesn't even mean. But when's the last time a U.S. senator has worked for Massachusetts, has made Massachusetts their priority? I think, I think Scott Brown tried. I don't, I don't think he got much done because he just wasn't around long enough, insufficient uh, data to give him an actual grade. But I think you have to go back to Ted Kennedy. Tremendous U.S. senator. Did not like his politics. I'm not saying that, but he, he man, he worked for Massachusetts. He understood. I think once it was clear he wasn't going to be the president of the United States, he focused on being a good U.S. senator, and he was one. Constituency services. I mean, he brought a lot of things to Massachusetts. Really knew how to lobby his colleagues to get things done. I mean, his DNA is on a number of Republican presidents' education policies and other things. But it's sad you have to go back because these two elderly, clueless, people in office they're there they're, they're, they, it's a victory lap for, for Markey 
And as far as I'm concerned, Elizabeth Warren doesn't do anything for anybody but herself. But this guy, Dean, I, I got to find out what, what he's about. Maybe we'll see if we can get him on uh, to talk about this. Uh, he's a Swansea resident now. So I'll see if I can locate him and find out what his plans are. I mean, Massachusetts is a tough place to live now. And it's, it's only getting worse. How about Boston? Boston wants to have now these, these fees and charges if you drive in a certain area and, and add to traffic. Well, somebody needs to pay for all these things they can't pay for. And so they're, they're just looking for ways to squeeze more and more out of you. And, you know, there's European countries, I guess, do this. Well, this, these are socialist countries. They're trying to steer you into public transportation. Which I think is a tough sell these days when you, when you look at the social space and that was required not that long ago and people living in fear of contagions like COVID-19 and flu season is even now people are reacting much differently since the COVID-19 trauma. You turn on the news every morning in Boston and there is some delay or some breakdown of one of the lines or more than one of the MBTA lines. It is dysfunctional. It is incompetent. They want you to get into public transportation that doesn't function. And now they're going to punish you for bringing your own vehicle, which is more dependable than the public transportation. And you get the government you deserve in a democracy, right? I mean, the Boston City Council, um, one of them that's leading this charge, Tanya Fernandez Anderson. Don't forget, she didn't recite the oath of office. She had to retake it. She was forced to retake it because they caught her not actually making the oath. Sign of an anarchist. I don't know. Um, I just, no, I didn't like it. And the, the people that they're putting in office in the city council, they have the collective intellect of an Oreo cookie. There's some real knuckleheads that they're putting in office. And, and they're climbing the ladder. Look at... Um, look at the representation. Come on. So they want to punish you for using your vehicle on top of taxing you. You get excise tax on your vehicle, right? You pay uh, transportation taxes on, what is it? Is it 82 cents on every gallon in Massachusetts? Something like that. You, know, you have to pay for the roads, things like that. You go on the pike. Pike was paid for many times over. It was supposed to, all the fees and tolls on the pike was supposed to be removed, but now they need that money for other things. Don't forget that Massachusetts wants to have a bottomless fund for housing illegal immigrants. I mean, that's not, not a joke. They, they don't want a cap on the spending. And it's not a federal spending, it's state spending. It's coming out of you. But you continue to vote for these people. So you deserve it. They're taking more from you. They're causing inflation so that your dollar is now worth less than it was three years ago. So your spending is worse off and they're taking even more from you as time goes forward. There's going to be an even larger exodus. Same for New York. Now, there's a really interesting uh, thought about what happened to Donald Trump yesterday. Legal experts analyzing what they called breathtaking civil penalties against Donald Trump are predicting an exodus of New York businesses, massive exodus out of New York down to Florida. Comptroller Jeffrey McConney and ex-CFO Alan Weiselberg are warning other corporations based in the Empire State that they may realize they could suddenly be out of business by the state on a political whim. Fox News reporting New York Supreme Court Judge Arthur Engeron found Trump liable for more than $350 million in damages in the fraud suit brought against him and his company by New York State Democratic District Attorney Letitia James. 
Trump Sr., the Trump Revocable Trust in Trump Organization, were found liable for $60 million, while Trump's sons in Weiselberg found guilty for $4 million each. And Trump Sr., plus several entities, including Trump Organization and the LLC, signifying Trump's Chicago Hotel, were banned from applying for loans with institutions registered with New York for three years. The three Trump family members also banned from serving as exec executives of any business or legal entity based in New York for a similar length, which is the key as the Trump organization is housed at its iconic tower at 5th Ave and 57th Street. Iconic Tower. That was, that was one of my more amusing observations about the theory that Trump was secretly meeting with Russians. Oh, yes. They picked a clever clandestine operation to happen in the Trump Tower where reporters <laughs> standing around looking for a story. They march in Natalia Veselnitskaya the Kremlin prosecutor, to secretly meet with the Trump. It was just so stupid that anybody even bought it in the first place. And you still have the parrots calling him a Russian asset because of this hoax perpetrated by the Clinton campaign. And the FBI pretended that they didn't know it was an FBI, a, a Clinton campaign hoax. By continuing the investigation, remember the Mueller investigation, all that stuff, that was all, they, they understood it was a hoax created by the Clinton campaign while they were doing these things. That's how bad they wanted Trump out of there. George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley further commented to Fox saying that Ingeron appeared to compound the highest fine figures in most of the areas adjudicated, noting that New York civil law in this area is unique because the proverbial crime can essentially be victimless. Yeah, there's was, there was no plaintiff, there's no victim. Uh, the banks that Trump dealt with, that the judge said uh, were defrauded, they, they were all happy with the outcome. He paid them the loans off with interest. They have no problem. They'd do it again. It, 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 you never see, this is, what they're doing to him is, is, in my opinion, a warning to anybody who is not going to play the game correctly with the establishment. It's scary. It's scary to think my country can do that if, if this is what's happening. I, I believe it is happening myself. I'm, I'm not positive, but, I, you know, the evidence, I'd say it's more likely than not that, I'm not wrong. Turley said the public and other legal officials may indeed take note of Trump's world's penalties because when you're imposing fines larger than the budget of some countries, you really have to wonder whether you've allowed your thoughts to run away with your judgment. It's one of the greatest ironies in this case. In the name of protecting businesses in New York, you probably just led to hundreds of business, businesses looking to relocate at potential rentals in Florida because they look and they go, wow, if we fall on the wrong side of the politics in New York... They'll sell us off as of spare parts. And it, that's not unfair. So I think it's incumbent on Trump supporters to go and look back on the history of a lot of politicians. Did they... Were they honest about all their credit card applications? Because that's fraud. You lie about your salary? Something small like that. And I'm sure there's, there's more egregious things than that. But I, I think that you're going to see a number of investigations, Internet sleuths and otherwise. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good. You know, listening to you, it just reminds me that... Uh, we're being denied our right to vote, not just on choice, but to actually have an effect on anybody who has anything to say about the moving the country forward. And it, uh, it just goes to show you that uh, we've gone past the point of no return. However, I think that if Trump is electable, 
in the national election, uh, we can kind of get the ship uh, turned around and maybe pick up some momentum, as I hate this term, grassroots level, and we'll see we'll see a better America in about two years. Because what we have now is the people with the microphone will not have conversation. They'll do anything. They'll break the law. They'll, uh, they'll, you know, vote for me and I'll set you free and I vote for you and I lose my liberty and I lose my security and I lose the value of my dollar that I work for. Uh, Democrats say democracies on the ballot. When is it never on the ballot? Why are we being treated like stupid soft eaters? Why, why are we being treated like that? And it goes through language. It doesn't matter what language you speak. What filters through is this nonsense. So I don't know what the fix might be, but I, I do know that our local uh, community representatives at the state level and uh, right here in uh, New Bedford, Fall River Town, really got to get together. You got to get together and have some transparency or some common ground as a county. Because I don't think we can fight this fight town by town and city by city. Now, I don't know about you, but the media has been a, a big letdown. I don't mind propaganda, but when it's totally got no thread of truth in it, I, I find it very extremely disturbing for the future of my children and nephews. Well, the number of problems I have with the media, the number of problems, including omission, because omission is a form of lying. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'll give you an example. Um, Mr. Jones knocked down the door and intruded on the family at 3 in the morning. The omission is, is that the house was on fire. That's the story. <laughs> that the, you know, it's, and it goes on and on. You can make these examples uh, up and down. Why, why are we being subjected to this when they, these people are not appointed? I, from a bureaucrat? Okay. But from an elected official, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I really believe it's time to, uh, in the 21st century to take away pensions. Take away pensions and uh, then talk about term limits. Don't talk about term limits when you're offering a big, fat pension and medical health care all along the way with the gas card and the free automobile. Well, Those you know, the people. term limits, and not to cut you off, the, the term limits, um, you know, I'm not... I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's the answer. It, but number one, I think two congressional terms, you get your full pension and, and benefits package for the rest of your life. So, you know, it's, it's not like they need to stay in for that factor. But when you, when you keep rotating politicians in and out of Washington or, or Beacon Hill, the bureaucrats will stay and they will gain more power and you, you don't really know who they are. And, and so you're just, you're just transferring the corruption to another area. Exactly. And now this example of Massachusetts, keep it local. Um, Choo Choo Charlie Baker, the gentleman that preceded him uh, from Chicago, what was his name? Uh, black governor. Deval Patrick. Um, Deval Patrick have right now bureaucrats in the Massachusetts system that's always there for them to reach out to and do backdoor any influences and everything else. And uh, this is the important thing. When we elect a governor or any high up trusted office position, they have the ability to appoint people from out of state as bureaucrats, people who normally could not be elected right. or even uh, uh, on anyone, but yet swing influence because the idea being is if the vote doesn't matter, you just got to get in office and you want things done to be through political action committees. So here again, if you're poor and you're voting, hang on to your wallet, hang on to everything that you may have your automobile because um, you're not going to get any help. You have to belong to a political action committee that works hand in glove with bureaucrats, people you've never seen. And this is why the Republican Party sucks, because that's all they know. Oh, dysfunctional. Mass Massachusetts uh, Republican Party is, they're the Washington generals who play the, the Globetrotters every night. Oh, are they? Hey, what they say in the Republican Party in Massachusetts, it's not the grades you make, it's the hands you shake. <laughs> and they're very happy to be extremely And they're crippled, yeah. Great call. They're, they're crippled. The Massachusetts Republicans, uh, I have insider information, you know, they, 
they know which fights to pick and which ones to stay off. Because if they cross a certain line, the Democrats, they frankly tell them, we're going to run a primary candidate against you. And so, you know, job one, keep my job. So they, they back off. Hi, Carly, you're next. Hey, and to make a point of what you just said, um, Scott Brown who ran a campaign, got gathered support. Somebody was, you know, we we're like, finally somebody you can get behind. And what did they do? Like a whack-a-mole. Boop. Nope. Crushed. Yeah, the reason, the reason they nailed him, they nailed him because he shamed Congress into reversing the Stock Act, which prevented, which then they had to vote on against themselves for the insider trading uh, advantage that they have. And as soon as they get rid of him, when Elizabeth Warren was in the next uh, January, by April, they reversed most of the things that Scott Brown worked hard to stop. So now the congressional right. me members can now go back to um, insider trading stuff. Fill in their pockets. Well, that's well, that's what I'm saying. Right now, we've got a governor who decides, you know, it's costing us a million dollars, a billion, a billion dollars, you know, every year to to figure out what to do with the immigration situation. And now the budget is coincidentally a billion dollars short and not one person that I heard of proposed any cuts to their pensions or to their pay or to their anything. No, they well, need Massachusetts, more money. What happened with that? Massachusetts actually brought in a billion dollars less than they did the year before somehow. So she's now well, got a well, billion dollar... Huh? Why, why would that be? Would, would anybody with their right mind know they're going to be taxed to death with the situation that's out of control with well, immigrants? I think, where, where are people going to invest? In I think some state? of it that's is, I think businesses are, are fleeing these blue states who just try to take more and more. Look at look how many millionaires, the millionaires tax, right? Uh, even athletes are not coming to, to New, New England Patriots or Boston or uh, if, they, no. if they have similar options where the taxes are less and not, you know, this punishing the millionaires for, for their salaries, they, they, have, they can go elsewhere. They don't have to come here. And that's, that's just the athletes. So why do you think she's saying, you know, oh, you know, we were foreseeing much more than, you know, they proposed they would be seeing much more. Well, then nobody thought that. Nobody who's paying any attention at all believed you were going to suddenly increase revenue with what's going on in the state. Hmm. So that was ridiculous. That was an excuse to make cuts when they know they know exactly where the cuts need to be made. And I agree. The call that just called about the pensions, I've called in about that before with with the local city elections. They they want to say, you know, people are just camping out here for the rest of their lives. Meanwhile, the perks, just like, you know, the lure of immigrants, which I do appreciate. I do appreciate a lot of the people who put a lot of hours into running, you know, for different elected offices. I do. But I don't believe ever on any level from from local to state to federal should people be getting perky little packages like that, because that's what causes to me. That's what causes the corruption. You have a career. You have a job. You have enough um, benefit to bring to this table. Then do it and go home. Well, the, pro the, problem with, the problem with these institutions is you got let's say you have somebody with a very noble cause. And they, and they go and they get elected. They're in a position now. They're on the Hill, whether it's Beacon or Capitol Hill, right? And they get there and somebody's putting their arms around their shoulder who is there longer and tells them how it's actually going to be. It's filthy. Yeah. It is filthy. And people, I hate to say, you know, I don't hate to say it. It's just the truth. People that have been there their entire lives, like Joe Biden, I do not believe they are any longer Americans. They are Democrats first and the Republicans as well. That's who you align with. That's where your decisions all come from. You are not looking at the big picture and what's good for the country. They will only vote party lines. But why I called was um, you've got um, you've got Biden on on, um, you know, doing a, his little speech about how hideous Putin is. And if you take that speech and listen to it and switch out Biden's name for Putin and Navalny's name for Trump and you listen to that speech back, everything he's saying, he could virtually be saying about himself. They are trying to kill Trump by a million cuts and they, are, and they will imprison him if they can in any which way. And if he dies, they'll be cheering. It's, a, it's just as sick. Because we look at Putin and say, how sick is that? Well, look around us. What's happening here? Yeah, I think there are, again, 
there are people who are convinced that this is not a prosecution, it's a persecution. And then there's the other side who doesn't care if it's persecution. Put, you know, put the screws to Trump. I can't stand him. I don't care what they do to him. I don't care if it's illegal. I don't care if it's, you know, tyranny. Uh, he, he deserves everything he's going to get. There is that. There's plenty of people who think like that. And, and that's a scare. That's what I'm saying is scary because if they're so aligned with their party or, or their hatred for Trump, and so much so that they can't see the forest through the trees, it's like this is your nation. There's a there's a this third party what, yeah. here too. There's a third there's a third fraction in this of people who are convinced that Trump did these things wrong and that he is being rightfully prosecuted. I can't fault them for support, supporting the government still. They if they if they you know they just believe that. It is as it seems, and he's done if, these things. If you're going to believe that, you should at least back it up and look, on, scratch, you know, scratch below the surface. Look at the fact. Do you want to be accused of, of like, your first, you know, let's face it, musicians draw attention, and, and women do throw themselves at you, which I think was Trump's uh, claim about, you know, what they caught him on, on an open mic with. People will throw themselves at you. Would you like a woman who threw herself at, at you, like, on your first show when you became a musician? It depends on what age I later? was, I guess. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and you come back well, years later and not. say, hey, that guy raped me. Like, wait a second. That that shouldn't be the country we live in. I am sorry. I, I think that did a huge disservice to women who have been, uh, and children, and, and people that have been sexually abused to let a case You're like talking that about the, the Trump, the infamous quote to Billy Bush? Yeah, that was on the I'm hot saying, mic. Let me uh, let's just if we're all being honest, I mean, do not try to tell me that all of your political heroes don't talk like that in private at some point because I, I, I know better. Right. And I don't think he was saying I do this. I go in dressing rooms and do this all day long and people let me get away with that. I think he, what he was saying is the reality is these people will throw themselves at. And I do believe it's true. At celebrities. And well, he said he, he said and, he grabs them. No. If you listen to it, he's like, they let you do this. I don't, like, I feel as though the way I heard it was, this is what is, oh, this is what the people that throw themselves at, politicians and celebrities and athletes and musicians, that is the kind of way it is. They, like, throw themselves. I don't know, really, I, I never heard it clearly that he said, and I do this because I can get away with it. So I understand what people were like you know, distasteful of that comment, but I actually think he's not wrong and not that he should do it, but I think that is what goes on. And, and if you're going to allow somebody like this 30 years later, who doesn't even know the date, the time or the year and why, if, if one hand of his was here and yeah. one hand was there, your mouth was op open to scream. The dressing rooms are right there. Like none of it makes any sense to me, but people are so vicious. They're like, get them, get them. I'm like, mm, I don't think that's the world we want to live in. I, gotta, I don't. I got to hold you here for commercial break. Good, Thanks, good phone call. Thanks. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember the way people reacted when Donald Trump said, uh, "Yeah, I take advantage of every, every uh, tax, every tax law, on the books that's afforded to me." And, and people said, "Wow, see, look what he does. He's a cheat. He's following. It, it's just not true." But anyway, we'll, we'll be right back. Coming up to the top of the hour, let's go back to the phones, 508-996-0500. You are next. Hello there. Hey, Ken. I think I better wait till after the news, right? It's 11. You got a, no, you got a good two minutes here. Really? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Anyway, I think Orange Man did it. He's guilty of fraud, and I believe that he's a phony, and I just don't like the man. Okay. Period. I don't. I don't care for Biden either. But I mean, Trump really, really. Well, if it's between the two, though, crazy. if you're if you're left with either, you know, both. Let's say both of these guys are on the ballot. What do you do with it? Yeah, it's sad. we're in a bad, bad way in this country. But um, I noticed Melania is not even Melania. However, you say her name, she doesn't smile in any of these pictures I see her in. 
I, she did yesterday. That was a, a oh, yeah? big smile when on they, her. When they met, when they met, she's all all fake too. When they met, I saw I have a picture somewhere here. When they first met, she looked a lot different. She looked sleazy, and oh. now she looks all made up, like all done up. You think she looks that. sleazy? Those eyebrows are uh, five hundred dollars for those eyebrows minimum. <laughs> the lady that started that's a billionaire. All the stars have them. But anyway, no, she was sleazy looking. I have the she, she was brought here as a model. It. I mean, she was brought here as a professional model when, when she first came here. Yeah, but the picture looks sleazy. He goes, he, that's his, mo, his MO with women anyway. He's no, he's so, no, look, he, let's, let's be honest. He's superficial. All of his, even his attorneys, I mean, they're all huddies. You know, he's, he's, he, every one of them, you know, pulls the ginger grant on the, on the media, you know. <laughs> Um, it, it's it, he's clearly superficial when it comes to looks. I I, I have no problem well, admitting that. Why doesn't he have a running mate anyway? He says another thing. He's just all uh, about I himself. Think, no, it's not that. I think he's protecting whoever it is because they'll be assaulted by the media the moment it happens. So I think he's going to let it go when when he has to. To be honest, that's when I that's what my theory is. I, I got to go though. Thanks for the call. Take care. WBSM and W258DR New Bedford. New Bedford's news talk station, 1420 AM and 99.5 FM. WBSM, a town square media station.